What are you doing in my living room? Uh, Where are we all? Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> I was born and raised in Belfast, Maine, in the heart of Wallow County. I attended local schools and graduated from Belfast Area High School. When I was a senior, I shared with my parents that I wanted to go to college to become a teacher. Now normally when you share an epiphany like this with your parents, they don't look at you cross-eyed like you have two heads. Okay, okay. But mine did. Um, while they are very aware of my love of children, they were still a bit confused because, to put it mildly, I struggled in the school environment. Way back in the day, school readiness, pre-K, were not a thing. I was home with my mom and my twin brother, and I went to nursery school every once in a while. Um, the lack of school readiness sincerely impacted my transition to public education. Um, I remember bits and pieces of my first two years of elementary school. I remember feeling really disconnected. I was pulled out of class a lot for one-on-one -on -one learning. I was spacing out a lot. I cried a lot during homework. Sorry, Dad, I love you. And I remember feeling like, why do my peers get it and I don't? Um, I didn't feel a connection. I had a learning disability and I built walls pretty immediately. Um, so a little while into school, I ended up feeling the way that most children should feel upon entering school. I finally did make connections with a lot of my teachers. The teachers who put interventions in place for me, the teachers who saw me for me and all of my, the good qualities they brought into their classroom and they established real relationships with me. They knocked down my walls. Some of these educators are still teaching and still making a difference in Waldo County today, and I will never forget how they made me feel. Elementary students spent upwards of 1,000 hours a school year with their classroom teacher. Imagine spending that much time with someone who you feel like barely knows you, someone who has not earned your trust, someone who doesn't seem to understand you. Will you be ready to learn? Now think about spending that much time with someone who supports you the way that many of my teachers supported me over time. Someone who celebrates your strengths and is committed to showing up for you every single day. Now we're talking. Students, even the most reluctant of learners, are more, more motivated to learn when they believe their teacher likes them, cares for them, and is there to support them. A review of educational research analysis of 46 studies showed that strong teacher-student relationships were associated with improvements on basically every measure that schools care about higher student engagement, attendance, grades, fewer disruptive behaviors. We must learn to connect and empathize with all of our students first and then they will be ready to learn with us. These days, school readiness is certainly a thing. I love our school in Little Moral, Maine for many reasons. One is that relationship building with students does not just stay within our classroom walls, but it truly transcends the entire building. So much so that I may be sitting at my desk doing prep work and a student who I've never had in class has stops by and tells me that their dog's favorite color is yellow and they needed me to know because they know that my favorite color is yellow. <laughs> We're fortunate to have a pre-k program within our building which houses 16 young learners preparing to enter kindergarten. I and many of the teachers in the school make an effort to build relationships right off the bat with those students. I use our shared lunch and recess time to foster relationships with them. My kindergartners create a book and video for our pre-K peers every year. They think of something that they learn or do in class that the pre-K friends can look forward to, and upon completion of both of those, we invite our pre-K friends into the classroom and share it with them. Our youngest learners feel included and connected. Academic practice in pre-K is super important, but those who experience pre-K within our schools gain so much more. Their social and emotional well-being is fostered, because they get to know the school, they get to know a bigger community of peers, they get to know the teachers who will support them for the years to come. But it's only a fraction of our youngest learners who are afforded this opportunity to attend pre-K at our schools. What about the others? Having taught for 13 years so far, I see how our pre-K students at our school hold quite a social and emotional advantage over students who have not attended pre-K at our school. The good news is that enrolling three and four year olds in public preschool programs has received increasing support over the past decade and a half. Nationally, the number of children in state funded programs has grown from 14% in 2002 to 29% in 2016. In 2009, 24% of Maine school districts offered voluntary preschool enrollment. By 2013, that had increased to 63%. The number is growing each year, but there is still a long ways to go to make sure every child has 
adequate preparation for kindergarten at their school. Nationally, Maine ranks 40th in preschool enrollment. 40th. We're so much better than 40th. Imagine if every child in our state had a quality pre-K program in their school, not only to practice academics, but to connect socially and emotionally with a community that will support them in the coming years. Despite the well-documented benefits of high-quality pre-K within a school, there are many factors that determine if a school system will offer public pre-K. In my community, like 35% of public preschools in Maine, pre-K is offered through Head Start programs. While this does provide some three and four year olds with adequate learning, these programs do not reach as many students as public preschool established by school districts would, in part because of the class size regulations and Head Start's financial stipulations. Their model focuses on serving children whose family income falls below a certain threshold, leaving a few open spots for students whose family income stays above the poverty line. Just this spring at my school, there's a massive wait list for the pre-K program, and I know many families who are forced to think about what kind of education their four-year-old will receive in the fall as they sit on the wait list. Another family that I know is just $1,000 below the income line, so now they choose between sending, continuing to send their child to daycare for $185 a week without a pre-K program or with an older relative for the school year. And this is the story of so many in our community and state. We must do better for our youngest learners to set the stage for a positive education experience and to avoid the inequities that result from the lack of access to preschool in our schools. Here is what I know. LD1799, an act to expand Maine's high quality early learning by increasing public preschool opportunities passed in June. This is huge. And Governor Mills recently proposed an investment of $10 million of federal funds to increase the number of four-year-olds enrolled in pre-K across our state. I have to wonder if the monies could be spent on districts taking over the pre-K program so that universally all eligible students experience a quality preschool program at their school and enter kindergarten with teachers who have already begun fostering relationships that they deserve. That would be true equity and equality for all of our youngest learners. What can we do to make this happen? We can meet with an early childhood specialist at the state level who's available for on-site consultations. We can meet with district staff, school board, and community members about the need for universal pre-K in our schools and all the benefits. All the intercepting teachers deserve this. All of the struggling little Mrs. Rays deserve this. All of our young families across the state deserve this. Let's make it happen for them.